Join me today for an action-packed episode of Locked on Fantasy Baseball, where I discuss who the top prospects are heading into the 2024 fantasy baseball season. You are Locked on Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Sports Network, your team every day. As always, we're your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino. Riding solo today, Matthew Anne has the night off. Uh, if you're listening on a platform like Apple or Spotify that allows five-star ratings and reviews, we would truly appreciate it if you could do that for us. And guess what? If you do decide to do that for us, you have a shot at winning a little prize. Um, if you take a screenshot of uh, your rating and review and send it to us at fantasymds at gmail.com or just DM it to us on Instagram or Twitter if that's easier for you, you have a shot in winning a spot in next year's Listener League. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already, hit that little bell below. It subscribes you to the channel and gives you notification every time we drop a new episode. And lastly, join us on Subtext, guys. On Subtext, we're going to throw out our top 15 uh, rankings at each position heading into next year. Uh, plus sleepers, bust, and all early you know, stuff with that. So join us on Subtext as well. But real quick, before we get into the meat of potatoes of today's episode, uh, i got to talk to you about today's sponsor, Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. All right, guys. So we're getting into this one. We're going to talk about early, you know, um, prospect rankings heading into next season. So I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek into my top 10 prospects next season for fantasy baseball. So this is going to differ than like, you know, the MLB's top prospects overall. You'll see some similar, some similar similarity, but you know, I'm more focused on, you know, who's going to be the most productive for fantasy baseball next season. Uh, when we're talking about, you know, top prospects here, some have debuted already. Some have yet to debut. Uh, let's get things started with who I think is going to be the consensus number one uh, headed into, you know, fantasy baseball, regular baseball, low, low, all over the place next year. And it's Jackson Holiday of the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, we all know that Baltimore Orioles farm system is absolutely stacked. And, you know, leading the way as of right now, it's that young Jackson Holiday, uh, 19 years old. He is the son of former perennial all-star Matt Holiday, who, you know, played a long time in the MLB with the Cardinals and the uh, Rockies. I think his son Jackson Holiday is going to follow right in his footsteps. Uh, he had a monster first full season in the minors where he went across four different leagues, getting all the way up to AAA, 125 games from Jackson Holiday, 477 at-bats, 113 runs, 30 doubles, 9 triples, 12 homers, 75 RBIs, 24 steals, with a great 101 walks, 218 strikeouts, and a 323 batting average. Uh, sky is the limit for young Jackson Holiday. Honestly, I, I really think if he gets a spot opening day next year, he's going to fly up rankings. Right now, I have Jackson Holiday as my um, 22nd shortstop overall. That's going to move up, though. If he 100% has the spot going into opening day next year, I will move him up a lot higher than that. Right now, roster resource has him slotted in um, as the starting day, uh, starting opening day shortstop for next season. I think Baltimore is going to give him every chance to win that job. You know, they, they, they made a strong push this year. I think Baltimore is going to want to make another strong push next year. Uh, you know, a little bit more about Jackson Holiday when uh, we look at that 40 to 80 grading uh, scale with prospects. Jackson Holiday's hit is a 70. His power is a 55, which is a little bit above average. I think at, you know, um, 19, he's six foot 185. He's going to grow into a little bit more power. The run is a 60, which is plus. Uh, the arm is a 55. The fielding is a 50. Overall, 70 grade prospects here for Jackson Holiday. Uh, I, I think he's just going to be that you know one of those guys that translates right away when he gets called up. I think he's going to be very very good. Definitely somebody to keep an eye on going into drafts next season. And um, as I've been doing on the last few episodes, I'm going to pull up NFBC ADP real quick. If you're not familiar with the NFBC, it's a National Fantasy Baseball Championship, and it's where you know a lot of the big time players go. A lot of big money leagues on there, and um, 
they have done uh, 33 drafts so far on that platform. And, you know, we're going to look at the shortstop here and get an idea of where Jackson Holiday has been going in some of these drafts. Uh, the 20th shortstop overall pick 197, a lot, a lot of value right there. I said I have Jackson Holiday as my number 22 shortstop in my rankings going into next season, and it uh, looks like ADP's pretty much spot on with me having him 20th. I could see him moving up two spots. I could see him moving up 10 spots potentially if he does have that spot opening day in um, Baltimore's uh, you know, roster there. So let's keep things moving. Let's move on to my number two prospect going into next season for fantasy baseball. And it's somebody who's made their debut already. It's Evan Carter. I think Evan Carter is just going to be a superstar in this league. Uh, 6'2", 190, lefty. He did everything right. Everything that you want to see a rookie do and, you know, a little cup of coffee, Evan Carter did. Played great in the playoffs, but let's talk about those 23 regular season games for Evan Carter. Uh, 20 years old, uh, 62 at-bats, 15 runs, 4 doubles, a triple, 5 homers, 12 RBIs, 3 stolen bases, 12 walks, 24 strikeouts, and a 306 batting average. And let's even talk about what Evan Carter did in the minor leagues before getting the call up. Um, 108 games, 420 at bat, 79 runs, 17 doubles, six triples, 13 homers, 67 RBIs, 26 steals, 81 walks, 111 strikeouts, 288 batting average. Uh, you don't, there's not much more you can ask from a young kid like this. Even in the postseason, he did great. Let's, we can even talk about that. 17 games, he had 60 at bats, nine runs, nine doubles. A homer, six RBIs, three steals, 300 batting average, 10 walks, 19 strikeouts. Uh, I have him ranked really high going into outf uh, in outfield next season. I have him as my 18th outfielder. That's an outfielder number two. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of risk there. I think there's a lot of risk there. Don't get me wrong, but I'm willing to take it with Evan Carter. Just has all the tools. Uh, going to be, I think he's going to be a five tool contributor next year. He's going to hit in a nice spot in that Texas, you know, championship uh, Texas Rangers lineup. Right now, it looks like Evan Carter's the thirtieth outfielder off the board. Um, NFBC ADP pick one thirty. I absolutely love it there. I love it there. That's basically getting him as your number three outfielder. Going to be very very strong going into next season, and uh, I I don't think that we're you know going to you know, miss, uh, uh, miss out on him. You know, I don't think we could take that opportunity. I really want Evan Carter on all of my teams next season. Um, not really much more to say there about Evan Carter. Uh, before we move on here, you know, I got the first two out of the way there. We got, um, uh, I don't really don't want to tease all the names here. So I'll give you some teams of these guys, uh, a top prospect from Tampa Bay that has already debuted. We also have, you know, um, a Brewers prospect, uh, Blue Jays prospect and a couple of guys that did just get drafted this season. I do have a quick ad for you guys. All right, guys, and I'm talking to you about Jace Medical. We spend a lot of time talking together, you and I. We get fired up together on wins and losses, who starts, who sits, and I'm thankful for that connection we have. And today, I want our chat to be a little bit more personable. I just learned that you can get a one-year supply on ED medications. You realize what that means? Bring on extended travel, bring on the next natural disaster or supply chain issue, and you are covered, my friend. You don't have to worry about whether or not you can refuse your generics for Cialis, Viagra, and Revito prescription. And this is possible because of our friends at Jace Medical. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use the promo code LOCKED on at checkout for a discount as well. A verified customer had this to say about Jace uh, Medical. I am thankful for the service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half to have it. I ordered most of my daily meds with a year supply. I also ordered an antibiotic kit. I feel secure now. Prices are lower than local pharmacies. I highly recommend this for everybody. If you or someone you love would get peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com to see if any are offered for you. Remember to use that promo code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. All right, guys, and one last thing here before we get back into it. Um, I have to talk to you about something new from Locked On. 
Locked On has launched the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Uh, it's called Locked On Sports Today. They're here for you 24-7 covering the top stories of the day with the local sports expert of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. All right, guys. So we're hopping back into this thing. We're going to bang out some more top prospects for you. I already got my first two out of the way. Let's move on to another top prospect that has already debuted. My number three top prospect for fantasy baseball next season. It's Junior Caminero of the Rays. This kid honestly been so, so impressive. Only 20 years old. Actually, you know, just turned 20 years old in July. And he had a monster, monster season in the minors last year. He hit 324 in 117 games, 85 runs, 18 doubles, 31 home runs, 94 RBIs, 42 walks, 200 strikeouts, and five steals. Now, he did play seven games and didn't really show out too much in those seven games in um, the majors this year. But I think Junior Caminero is going to be an absolute stud. Um, very young, very disciplined and poised for a young hitter. I have Caminero as my 11th third baseman going into next season. I think with a strong showing during spring training, uh, that could even move up. Uh, the, the kid is very, very good. I think he had the record for... Um, someone under 20 years old, you know, with 31 home runs, or I think he maybe was the second guy to ever do that. But he's one of very few, if the, not the only one. Uh, Caminaro, I think he's going to get a good spot in that lineup last year. We know how good Tampa was, you know, on um, this past season. And uh, let, let's just see how things look. I, I, I just think he's going to be very, very good heading into next season. And I um, am drafting him um, fairly high. Uh, but let's uh, check ADP to see where he's going. Uh, I will throw that out there again. We're using NFBC ADP with 33 drafts so far. Let's see where he's going as far as third baseman go. I think we're actually uh, a 19, 19 third baseman off the board. Pick 200. Uh, a lot of value there for Caminero, uh, especially if that home run power can translate. Uh, the runs in the RBIs are going to be good as long as he has a decent spot in that lineup heading into next season. Uh, I really love the outlook of Junior Caminero. I'm honestly I'm excited about a lot of these young prospects here uh, because, you know, they could be anything. But let's move on to the next one. Let's talk about Jackson Churio, outfielder for the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, just another one of these young guys that just looks so promising going into next year. Uh, he is 19 years old, 5'11", 165 pounds, but he's already got plus power. Imagine this kid puts on another 10, 15 pounds. Uh, the sky is the limit. Uh, Let's talk about last season for Caminero, oh, not Caminero, Churio. Um, 282 batting average for Jackson Churio, again, outfielder, Milwaukee Brewers. He played in 128 games, 88 runs, 26 doubles, three triples, 22 homers, 91 RBIs, and 44 steals. If you just want to talk about strict upside, who has the most upside out of all of these guys to just be a perennial um, all-star, superstar caliber guys, uh, I think it might be Ch uh, Jackson Churio. I really love everything this kid does on and off the field. I have yet to really mix him into my outfielder rankings, but this is another guy where if we get the word that Jackson Churio has a spot on that Brewers team going into next season, uh, I don't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't even begin to imagine where you know, um, he, you know, he starts flying up the boards to. Um, I, I, I let's take a look at my outfielder rankings, and I'll kind of tell you where I think I could fit him in. If that was the case, that we definitely knew he was going to have a roster spot, I would honestly say maybe like 24. And I guess that makes him an outfielder two. Uh, so maybe let's say just 25. So he'd be an outfielder three. But once again, if everything just clicked for Jackson Churio, I mean, we could see a five tool guy with plus power, um, elite speed. And, you know, Brewers team's okay. Good lineup there. I think the runs in the RBIs could be very good, too. So just the Jackson Churio, uh, you know, a, a top five prospect, I think, everywhere. I have my, my number four prospect for fantasy baseball next season. Uh, really love the outlook for, you know, Jackson Churio as well. Uh, let's talk about our first pitcher here. Let's talk about Ricky Tiedemann of the Blue Jays. Uh, absolutely dominated at the Arizona Fall League. I believe he won, you know, best pitcher out there award. Now, he's a guy that I just think, you know, has elite stuff. 
very good fastball. Changeup is good as well. Slider is, is solid. He's 21 years old, 6'4", 220 for the big Ricky Tiedemann. Let's talk about his stats overall from last year. He was injured, you know, for a lot, so he did have to adjust coming back, but he finished the year strong. He had a 3 6 8 ERA across 15 starts, 44 innings. He had 82 strikeouts. Batters hit 199 against him with a little bit of an inflated 1 2 3 whip. Uh, I really love Ricky Tiedemann. Uh, like I said, very, very good stuff. The, you know, Blue Jays could use a guy like him, especially after the season that, you know, Alec Manoa had. They thought Manoa was the ace of the future. Uh, I think Ricky Tiedemann could be that guy for them. You know, going into next year, it looks like Gaussman, Berrios, Bassett, Kikuchi, Manoa. I think he's one injury away. He's one, you know, um, he's five bad Manoa starts away from getting a chance. I think Ricky Tiedemann. Uh, it's just a name that we're really going to have to pay attention to because of the elite stuff, the elite size, big strikeout potential. I think the last thing that might come along is that control. But, you know, um, before, you know, last season with the injury, we go back to 2022 in the minus for Ricky Tiedemann, 217 ERA, 18 starts, 78 innings, 117 strikeouts, batters hit 149 against him with an 086 whip. Just very, very strong for Ricky Tiedemann. Uh, I think he's going to be elite once he gets the call. Just going to be like that Yuri Perez, Tanner Bybee type that, you know, Spencer Strider type that really just comes in and shows out. Um, really love, you know, what this kid's capable of. Let's move on to, you know, the first guy that we're going to talk about from, you know, um, last season's draft. Uh, it's Paul Skeens. Uh, Paul Skeens, just one of the best pitching prospects we've seen in a long time. Uh, six foot six, two thirty five. If you thought Ricky Tiedemann was a big guy, um, Paul Skeens puts him to shame. Paul Skeens, you know, could do it all. Has very, very good stuff. Um, you know, uh, let's hold on. I'm just backing things up here real quick, folks. Bear with me. A little bit of internet troubles there. But, um, you know, let's talk about what Ricky Tiedemann did in the minors last year. Not very dominant, but five starts, 540 ERA, six innings, 10 strikeouts, batters at 192, 105 whip. So not a big sample size there for, you know, Paul Skeens. But, you know, the kid's very good. Well, uh, we talk about that 40 to 80 grade scale, the fastball's an 80. Fastball's absolutely dominant, blow you away type of pitch. Uh, 70 grade slider, um, overall 65 grade prospect. Uh, you know, if that fastball does top out around 99, he normally sits 93 to 95, can just dial it up when he needs it. Uh, the changeup goes from 88. You know, he even hit 102, actually. He topped out at 102 um, at LSU there, you know, the big Paul Skeens. Uh, really love what, you know, he's poss uh, the possibility of him of just being dominant. I don't know if the Pirates are going to rush him through the system and have him up this season, but a name to keep an eye on because if he does, you know, uh, let's go back to the 2023 season in college for Paul Skeens where he had 12 wins, two losses, a 1-6-9 ERA across 19 starts, 122 innings, 209 strikeouts, and a 075 whip. That just gives you the idea of the dominance that this kid potentially has. I think Paul Skeens is a future ace. I don't think he's going to start the year with the uh, team on the bigs. So he's a guy that you might be able to throw a dart at with your last pick and keep him on your bench if you have teams with big benches or NA spots available in your you know leagues. Uh, that will definitely be um, a spot where I'll, I'll consider Paul Skeens uh, but we'll see. We'll see how things go. If not, you have to be ready to pick this guy up as soon as the call gets made because the sky is the limit. Uh, let's move on to actually a New York Yankees guy. I forget where we are here with my top prospects. How, we'll just do a little quick rehab. Uh, Jackson Holiday was number one. Evan Carter was number two. Junior Caminaro was number three. Jackson Churio was number four. Ricky Tiedemann, number five. Paul Skeens, number six. So we're up to number seven. Let's talk about him. Jason Dominguez, the Martian himself. Now, Jason Dominguez uh, was highly, highly touted when he came over to the States um, uh, quite a few years back. He he was um, around since the time that he was, I believe, like 16 um you know, uh, so 20 years old, Jason Dominguez finally got the call, you know, started to live up to the hype, eight games, 31 at bats in the bigs this season, six runs, a double four homers, seven RBIs, one steal, uh, 258 batting average. 
in the minors in 2023. Dominguez had 40 steals, 15 homers, 265 batting average, over 118 games. The power is legit. The speed is is legit with Dominguez. The batting average is, you know, where we we question him. Is he going to be a, a you know more of a 260, 270 hitter, or can he eventually get that batting average up? That yet to be remains, uh, yet remains to be seen. But with the thing is with Dominguez, he got Tommy John. If we if you don't remember that fatal injury that happened just as he was starting to come into his own in the bigs, you know, uh, went out with the Tommy John. So he's just expected to be back around midseason from what I was, uh, you know, seeing. But with Dominguez, uh, I think that's another guy that I'm probably going to have my outfielder rankings in the 70s. Uh, if you have that extra IL spot towards the end of your draft, you know, you want to throw your dart in that direction. Uh, I'm not going to be mad at you because uh, I, I just kind of want to see. But then again, if okay, let's say he's ready to start playing again in June. Do the Yankees immediately call him up and have him in the bigs? Or is he going to go back to the minors to, you know, get his bearings first and then, you know, play 20 games down there and come back up? Uh, yet remains to be seen. But if you want to take him next year in fantasy drafts and, you know, just stash him on your IL, I'm not mad at it, but it's probably going to be a move that I do very little. It's not, I'm not going to be looking to do that in every uh, draft with Jason Dominguez. With that being said, let's move on to my number eight prospect going into next season. It is James Wood. He went over to the Nationals from the Padres in that Juan Soto trade. And, you know, James Wood, just a big man of that Aaron Judge type build where, you know, James Wood is uh, 21 years old, 6'6", 240, has very good power, also has very good speed. Let's talk about what he did in the minors this year, James Wood. He hit 262 over 129 games, 80 runs. Uh, 28 doubles, 8 triples, 26 homers, 91 RBIs with 18 steals. Now, he reminds me of that O'Neill Cruz, Ellie De La Cruz type where, you know, the speed is pretty good for a big guy. I think the power is going to be absolutely legit for James Wood. I think there's a chance that we see him um, in 2024. I don't know if the Nationals are going to give him the chance to make the team out of spring training. Uh, if he does, uh, I don't even know where he would wind up my outfielder ranks. I would probably say, you know, somewhere in the 40s, 50s. And that's even, you know, 100% he makes the team going into spring training. If he's hot, I guess that could even move up to maybe the, the 30s. Because, honestly, I keep saying this. I really think after, like, the top 30 outfielders, it becomes a crapshoot at that position. And, you know, you see the names like the James Woods and the Jackson Churios. And if those guys are going to be making their team out of spring training, are we bumping them up, you know, closer to that top 30 where things start to fall off? Or are we going to, you know, get some of these more, um, you know, um, middling type guys, you know, the I'll, I'll throw names out there like a Jaron Duran, a Lars New Bar, um, a TJ Fr a Frito, Christopher Morell. Are we taking those guys over, you know, the James Woods and the Jackson Trios if they're definitely going to be making their teams out of spring training? Uh to be determined, to be determined at the moment, because, you know, some of those names are interesting, but even like a Starling Marte guy who's been banged up, uh, you know, the past couple of years, but does have the upside. I don't know. I want to see how Wood and Churio look in spring training. And if they're really looking, you know, great, I could see it. I wouldn't be mad at having them as my number three outfielder, uh, number four outfielder in five outfield leagues or, you know, um, second utility, something along the lines of that, because they have the upside. Uh, they've looked very good throughout the minor league careers and, you know, uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll move on to my ninth overall prospect going into next season. It is Colt Keith, uh, third baseman for the D Detroit Tigers. Another name that I haven't really, uh, mixed in to my, um, you know, third base rankings going into next season. But another guy, if we say, hey, you know, um, Detroit wants to get the chance to, you know, get that extra draft pick by having Colt Keith in there and him winning, you know, rookie of the year, which is a certainly a possibility. Uh, Colt Keith last year hit 306 uh, across 126 games, 88 runs, 38 doubles, three triples, 27 homers, 101 RBIs, 60 walks, 121 strikeouts, three steals. Not a lot of speed, but he's quick. You know, three triples, 38 doubles. The power's legit. 
Um, it will be held back a little bit playing in Detroit, that big stadium. But Colt Heath is 22, 6 2, 2 11. Uh, I really, really love, you know, how good this kid is. Uh, started to excel last year big time, you know, uh, making it all the way to AAA and, you know, just tore the cover off the ball everywhere he went. This is a guy I really could see making the team out of spring training because, um, uh, what is it, Matt Veerling blocking him there? Matt Veerling, not much of a threat to Colt Keith. I think that this guy comes out in spring training and just really dominates. He'll get every opportunity. Well, where would I put him at third base if I knew he was definitely making the team? Um, I could see him being, you know, 17th, 18th. Uh, I highly doubt he's being drafted all, at all right now. Um, you know, even with the, um, the experts doing it on NFBC, let's see if he even has an ADP at the moment. Uh, actually, yeah, 30th third baseman off the board, pick 392. Um, of course, if we, you know, find out he's making the team going into opening day, it will definitely be. You know, he'll definitely be flying up draft boards. I could see him topping out, you know, even like I said, uh, 17, 18 for me at third base. Just love everything Colt Keith has to offer. He's super legit. Um, power is 60 grade. Um, you know, once again, a 40 to 80 grade, you know, prospect um, scale. Uh, he also, you know, decent hit tool at 55. I think he could be a 270, 280 hitter, close to 30 homers. RBIs and runs, you know, really going to depend on that Detroit team and where he would hit. Uh, so Colt Keith could be somebody that contributes next year. Uh, I do love the upside on him. Okay, so for my 10th overall prospect, I do have a tie here. Two prospects that are very similar, both just drafted in you know last season's draft. And, you know, both have a lot of upside. I'm talking about Wyatt Langford of the Texas Rangers, and I'm talking about uh, Dylan Cruz of the Washington Nationals. I think they're both very good. I think they're, you know, um, similar type of players. So I kind of lumped them together here. Uh, it, they both, I guess, have a shot, you know, going into next year of making the team. Uh, Wyatt Langford would join the championship Texas Rangers team. He's 22, 6, 1, 225. One of the more polished young prospects, you know, from that um, 2023 draft. He was the fourth pick. Uh, you know, Langford has 65 grade power, 60 grade hit tool. The run is even a 55, which is, you know, a little bit above average. And last year, Wyatt Langford did get to play 44 games. He hit 360 with a 480 OBP. Uh, I'm not sure if I said it. I'll say it again. 44 games, 36 runs, 17 doubles, two triples, 10 homers, 30 RBIs, 36 walks to 34 strikeouts, and 12 stolen bases. Uh, Wyatt Langford is a name that you're going to have to remember. He's an outfielder uh, for the Texas Rangers once again. This is a guy, if he you know gets called up, you we're gonna have to be on him right away. Uh sky's the limit, big strong boy. He's fast. Uh let's see if anyone's been drafting him so far in these um, you know, well, actually, yeah, they have been drafting him so far in NFBC through 33 drafts. He's the 31st outfielder off the board, pick 141. Uh actually, you know, and uh the 30th outfielder so far in FBC ADP is Evan Carter, his teammate, uh pick 130. So uh, that kind of just says right there what the experts think about Wyatt Langford. I love him too. Uh, I have to see more before I get him into my outfielder rankings. I kind of have to see what the feel is, um, you know, with that Texas Ranger team going into spring training. Uh, I'm going to pull up roster resource and see what they say that lineup's going to be looking like heading into next year. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't really see the wide open spot for Langford. But, you know, with um, Ezekiel Duran being that utility guy slash DH, uh, the rest of the team looks pretty locked in. I mean, Leody Tavares at center field, uh, I guess there's a little bit of wiggle room. But, you know, Wyatt Langford is definitely a name to look out for uh, for next season. I, I think there's a chance, you know, one, two injuries away from him getting, you know, the opportunity there uh, in Texas. Let's move on to Dylan Cruz. 21 year old prospect, six foot 205. Uh, the hit grade is 70, power grade is 60, the run grade is 60. Uh, a lot of upside here with Dylan Cruz. Uh, last year, he got 137 games in, 292 batting average, 26. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I, I 35 games in, 35 games in, not 137, 35 games in, 292 batting average, 137 at bats. 26 runs, 9 doubles, 5 homers, 29 RBIs, 4 steals, 14 walks, 38 strikeouts. 
Uh, Dylan Cruz is, is very good too. That Nationals team could use, you know, a little bit of a boost uh, with the Woods, with the Cruises involved. Uh, I think the Nationals have a, a decent minor league team where, you know, they, they could bring some of these guys up and, and try and challenge for things like the Baltimore Orioles did this past season. And they, there might be some luck, some success there with, you know, the CJ Abrams, the Lane Thomases, the Kybert Ruizes. Uh, you know, even Carter Keyboom and Victor Robles are both still 26. They haven't really shown much yet in the majors, but there is some upside there. You know, and then if you look at the pitching side of things too, Mackenzie Gore still only 25. Josiah Gray is going to be 26. Uh, there's there's upside here. You know, Dylan Cruz can get up there and, you know, um, James Wood can get in there. I think that lineup could be a lot better. Um, with that being said, you know, that's my top 10 prospects going into next season. I'm going to wrap things up. So, guys, that is all for today. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. And shout out to our everydays and new listeners for making Locked On Fantasy Baseball your first listen each and every day. And also remember, check out um, Locked On Sports Today on YouTube, the first ever um, national sports 24-7 screaming channel. A lot of good stuff on there. So, once again, make sure to check it out. But, guys, that is all for me today. Until next time, see ya.